Well, well, well. They actually made the Future Soldier Preparatory Course or Fat Camp an official program. So it's here to stay. Here's my thoughts, here's my opinion on it. So stay tuned for more. I made a video on this last year about a new program that the Army was introducing to help soldiers get up to standard, whether they was academically ineligible or overweight, which I know everybody harp on the overweight part. That's why people call it the fat camp. And it was you. It was made to help improve the recruiting numbers because at the time last year, it was a really big deal that the Army was not actually about to hit their numbers for recruiting for active duty soldiers. And ironically enough, they're not on pace to do it this year, so it wasn't really effective. Uh -huh. But they did see that the uh, the um, the program was actually a beneficial, so they actually made it a permanent thing. My thoughts on it. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep it double advocate on both ends. So I'm going to give the bad and the good on this. I will say personally, I've seen the, um, the, the camp actually in person when it first came out at, in, at Fort Jackson. Um, it was in reception. And, and that's something changed. I don't know over a year time has passed, so I don't know if they made any like adjustments and stuff like that. I would say it was kind of candy because a lot of stuff you can do in basic and get up to standards as far as on a fitness level. Um, most of the stuff they did was basically swole control stuff, meaning that like, uh, so if you have been to basic, uh, and some companies may not can relate to this, where every Sunday, they open up like the, uh, the, not the gym, but they open up some workout equipment that you can use, uh, the dumbbells and uh, medicine balls and stuff like that. And you can work out on a Sunday if you don't want to go to church and stuff like that. And people did that, when, and that was more of a Charlie thing when I was in basic. They did that a lot. They did that almost every Sunday. You do deadlifts, all that stuff. And that was just as effective. But in the same breath, I can understand how that could be intimidating the same time since I've been in that environment where you can get people that are uh, at a higher level, like maybe like in a 500s, and they can be do killing the workouts and then you might feel insecure and either not come downstairs to work out or you can like be, someone can be training you, but you may not be doing it at their standard. So sometimes they can get impatient even because they're not obligated to teach you. So they, they don't, they kind of, you know how sometimes people teach you something and they know it so well and then you can't grasp it. They kind of don't understand why you can't understand the same way that I understand it. Kind of like a drill sergeant type deal, <laughs> but no shade. So, and it can be kind of intimidating. So I understand that if you bring people on a fat camp or fat camp or preparatory course where you actually take them from their environment, where it may not be good because you may not understand. Sometimes people, sometimes like people always say like base training is a horror play. Some people might be luxury because you don't know their living condition. So if you put them in an environment where it's people that are just like them in an air, in a army area where they can be around people that are in the same boat as them, they can actually understand and gain empathy and motivation. More than likely, they're going to feel more encouraged to keep pushing and motivating them to want to lose the weight or at least get out of the situation so they can either do, they can either say I'm built for it or they're not built for it. It can be either way how you spin it. So I think that's good to know. I don't think the lack of recruit numbers is due to people that are overweight or not academically ineligible, even though those are problems. I think it's more towards one, they're, they're targeting the wrong market uh, based on the people that they actually want to bring. It doesn't really match. It doesn't really match type deal. It's like, for example, if you're if you're working at a, a Best Buy, not Best Buy, say you're working at a toy store, but you're selling toys to 35 year old men. It doesn't really make sense. Why does why would a 35 year old man want toys unless there are collectibles? But you're not even selling collectible items for them to either go to trade shows, keep for themselves, and all like that. They're selling like stuff that's not even worth nothing. So it's kind of like that. It's beneficial to cater to them because they are a big a big market. Because if you get a 35 year old into toys, they're more likely doing high ticket items or big collectibles from the past, stuff like that. It's kind of the same here where you're targeting the OBs or people that's not maybe academically eligible, which those are those, those ones are good, but why are you targeting them? Because more likely y'all more catering towards combat type MOSs for active duty, being the physically fit, being the toughest, the strongest. Most of the drill sergeants are combat related MOSs where they fixate more towards a combat realm than a non-combat, unless you're a medic or something like that. Even OCS is the same exact thing. They don't even really care for either reservists or non-combat MOSs. Trust me, I, I, I know. If, if it ain't FA, if it ain't infantry, 
<laughs> or you know what I'm saying? Or they engineering, they're not really going for it. even engineers kind of a stretch, to be honest with you. But if it's not combat, they're not even uh or or MI or something like that. But that's more of an OCS thing. That's not even a thing over in um basic. But that's kind of my thoughts on it. I think I think personally on top of that as well too, me actually seeing the actual apartment of them doing it in reception. They just, like I said, they just do ACFT workouts. They might run a little bit. They might um, practice a little bit. But other than that, they're pretty much just chilling for the most part when they're there. So I don't think that it's the best feel. I think you should just throw them in basic and see how they do. Because there's a lot of people that are not if, up, up to weight standards. And they can't do nothing. And they still make it through basic training. Because they either got the grind on, people helped them. Or they got a situation where... You better finish or you're going to start back over and you're going to have to do it all over again. And then you can't make it again. Then you have to do it again and then you get sent home. So you're going to be in there for like damn near half a year before you even like get processed out of the army type deal. So it's kind of like either way. But I think that and also too with the training, um, you can kind of have the wrong trainers. Even though people can be in shape, don't mean they know what they're doing. I think they should leave. I don't know how they do the how they, how they do selection with drill sergeants uh, as far as. Uh, how who how who trains them? I think it definitely should be people that are have the madness fit, ma, uh, master fitness or a personal training or some type of uh, fitness background, so you can actually teach them the actual techniques. Because most time, most likely, they're probably just going straight off the uh, off the uh, preparatory drills. And even though they know how to do it, they don't know how to like do it to help other people. They can just show you the right form, but. If someone has certain uh, alignment issues or something wrong with them, they may not be able to help them help them get get them squared away. So, say for instance, you have a back issue, they may not understand how to get them. Or, well, technically, if you had mounts, you're not supposed to have. You're supposed to be healthy coming coming into base training. I mean, coming into the tra uh, preparatory drills. So, I guess you can assume that. But if they have any muscle deficiencies or something like that, so they're unable to do it, what workouts can you do that is not army approved that you can teach them? as well to get them up the standard and build up their muscle so if they can't do if they can't do a ball throw how are you teaching them to build their strengths up as opposed to just constantly doing a ball throw and helping with technique there's no tap c there which is the gym to my knowledge there so there's no strength training to my knowledge there I, I could be wrong but i don't think there's any strength training if you go to ocs they have tap c which is a gym and they actually have personal trainers that will teach you how to properly work out lift weights and stuff like that i think having those people um, like maybe retired vets to actually teach them that, or maybe uh, personal trainers or something like that can teach them. That'll make it fit. That'll get them up the standard a lot faster. But then again, you can say in the same breath, why not just send them the base training and have those trainers do the same thing while they're there? It can kill two birds in one stone. You know what I'm saying? So my thoughts is, um, I think it's good for morale. I think morale is a thing that needs to be improved, um, just on a camaraderie standpoint, and not just co a, a morale builder. Just to meet the stand, this meet this this to kind of check it off the the board because sometimes you can kind of do stuff just to hit the compliance, but you don't really care about it. Like for them, say st say status pro bono or something like not pro bono. Say you're trying to do um you know you're trying to do inclusion, you try to hit the diversity, so you just hire one person even though you really don't care about diversity, you just hire enough just to kind of hit check off that box, but you really don't care type deal. It's kind of the same just. If they feel people feel like you generally care, people would say more positive perception things. So I think just having that morale boost and will be a lot better um, incorporate be more incorporated to get people to want to join more. Because even though they're doing this program, it's still about not missing numbers. So it's not just necessarily meeting the standard that matters. It's more about the mental and the morale and getting people feeling like they want they they want they're happy to be in the environment. They feel like they're part of a family, even you know what I'm saying they're part of a family, they're part of a union. Even though the army can be conceived as prestigious, one of the best things ever, it can be seen like that if you gain that perception of that. Not like they should be happy to join us, but it should be like, oh, we're happy that you guys are part of our family. We're gonna treat you right no matter what. And not just from maybe like a couple NCOs, cool with a couple NCOs, or officers cool with some officers. I'm talking about from a whole field that you will, I know that I'm gonna look out for you no matter what. And from the top all the way to the bottom. So I think if they work on that, I think it'll help boost the overall morale and perception about it. And also target the right people that they're actually looking for. And don't go the politically correct way when you know that's not what you want to go anyway. So that's my thoughts and opinion. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Hit the subscribe button. I'm out.
が